Angels, angels, angels. This is Rwanda Sumner, um, the owner and founder of Butter Angels. And today I am so honored to introduce to you Bridget McCoy. She is the CEO and founder of uh, Women's Veteran Social Justice Network. And I know you've heard of her. She's been in front of Congress. She's been on CNN, NBC News, um, NPR. She's been, she's been doing, she's been supporting veterans for a long time. And I don't wanna take up any more of her precious time. So I'm gonna let her go ahead and get started. Um, thank you for coming, Bridget. I really do appreciate it. Thank you, the honor is all mine. It's always a wonderful opportunity to meet other women who are doing great things in the community and also wanting to expand the, the narrative and the voice of women who are doing great things as well. So there, there's never this feeling of like, oh, I can't, talk about all the great things that someone else is doing because that might take away some of my shine. So I'm always excited when women are out there um, doing these great things and, and wanting to explore and talk about the great things that other women are doing. So this is an honor. I mean, we can only grow together. Right. And I mean, there's, there's so much to give. There's so much to offer that, I mean, why be selfish, right. honestly? And I think, honestly, I think my audience is going to just learn a great deal from you. Um, First, tell us about your, your military career um, tell you, and tell us about your entrepreneurial story too, because I want everybody to learn. So the funny thing, I've always been an entrepreneur. I started selling candy and pickles in elementary school, probably when I was about the fourth or fifth grade. So my mom would um, buy these big jars of pickles and, and all of this candy for us kids, me and my sister, and uh, she she would get it, I guess, wholesale because of where she worked or whatever, but she would get it for us. And then I would, I got the bright idea, um, besides babysitting, besides braiding people's hair and all of these other things, <laughs> I got the bright idea that, you know, I like pickles. So maybe some of my classmates would like pickles. And so I was like, let me figure out how to do this. So I figured out, you know, get some Ziploc bags and put a little bit of juice in it. So it, you know, it, I'd have these juicy pickles that people could buy. So I, I, you know, I've always been an entrepreneur. I don't, I don't remember a time where I didn't think entre in an entrepreneurial way. Um, it's always been about, you know, starting something, um, create, you know, coming up with an idea, figuring out how to monetize it, scaling it up to some, to this next thing. And then, you know, the next, the next thing, and then the next thing. And then some of the um, enterprises, that I have had in the past, you know, I was a Mary Kay consultant. Most people, you know, know about Mary Kay. So I was, you know, I was Quorum. I so Quorum, which were these alarms that these personal protection alarms. Um, I I currently uh, am into wellness. I have a well. I'm part of a wellness company, Mel Melaleuca. Yeah. So, so we are, you know, embarking on this journey. Uh, for health and wellness for the military uh, and family and community and creating ways to uh, also fund and support the organization. And so, you know, every project that I've ever taken on has always had some element that uh, supports some cause. You know, I sold t-shirts at one time um, with a special logo on them uh, to raise money for uh, <clears throat> children in Nicaragua. I mean, there's, there's all, you know, it, it's like, you know, you see a need, feel a need, but, you know, how can you do it in a way that's going to create enterprise for other people? Because, of yeah. course, when you're selling shirts, then somebody's got to make them, somebody's got to, you know, order the shirts from a company that also makes the shirts, you know, so then you're creating these other opportunities by uh, creating these different levels of enterprise. So um, it, it just seemed a natural progression for me uh, when technology started to advance and social media um, really had already taken off with other communities, but it began to take off uh, more for folks who were in their mid thirties at that time um, to, to begin to see how to what I saw lacking in the veteran community was that there was, there was no veteran um, women community that was connected on a continuous basis. Mm -hmm. So, uh, there, you know, there were great, great groups out there. There were women doing all kinds of great things, meeting and doing all this stuff, but I didn't see something happening continuously 
uh, where people from all over, people with disabilities who maybe couldn't drive, maybe people who have agoraphobia, couldn't leave their home. It was like, how can I create something that bridges that gap? Yeah. So um, social media um, became the, ca the catalyst, um, you know, for me, for, the, for WVSJ. So um, and that was <clears throat> nine years ago. So we've been doing this online when people laughed and scoffed, you know, how are you going to uh, uh, connect military people online? They didn't understand. They couldn't conceptualize that at that time. They weren't ready. And, but now even the DOD, you know, um, medical facilities now do secure chat online. So telehealth principles have the same thing. A lot of the things that we were doing already um, mm -hmm. online, um, now a lot of the bigger organizations see the the value they see the, the they were able to monetize it <clears throat> in my instance i wanted it to be philanthropic i wanted it to be just a community service because at the in the beginning i didn't necessarily see it as a business mm -hmm. i saw it more as a service to the to my community um and so and so there's been all kinds of different iterations of wvsj uh, within that process because in 2006 actually it started off as a, a program for uh, connecting um, unemployed uh, women for better um, uh, employment opportunities so it's just it's just been little different iterations and then when I finally figured out that social ne networking and social media was going to be the tool that just that just exponentially you know launched everything yeah and I think what you're doing is great because um and I'm surprised people gave you flack for it. I mean, naturally, anything great at first, people will be like, uh. But I'm right. really surprised because military, that's how we function. Like, we get to a school and we're there for a week and we leave with three best friends. And then we're lifelong friends with somebody who's in Germany and Korea and Canada. And you don't see these people again until you're like 85, but you contact each other all the time. Right. So I think that was, um, that's really clever of taking something we already do and we're already about yes. and monetizing it for someone else's good yes yes and i've noticed uh, when i was doing research on you that you've done quite a bit for our community um <laughs> a lot especially when it comes to mst military sexual trauma and um just various aches pain points that military women but all military people but particularly women military women experience and so um you have quite the pedigree of just committees associations awards honors yeah. um how does women veteran w uh, vsjn how does that all tie like how do you take all of that information and tie it in to your organization so <clears throat> the other part of the beauty of this organization was this was my uh, master's thesis program project. I actually created uh, WVSJ actually started off as veteran social justice and it was a, um, a synchronous learning com uh, community is actually where, where it started out. And at the time again, because a lot of this stuff was at that time was bleeding edge. People had not even had these types of conversations. There wasn't, there wasn't even a community. There was, there was like, you know, um, the, the learn, the um, training and development communities really hadn't un understood how to do online learning. And here I was doing adult learning online using s social media and Brit using it as the scaffolding for the actual learning to happen. And so what I understood very early is, um, and I do a lot with narrative work. And again, these are terms that, again, these are just things that have now become like mainstream. Mm -hmm. But when I was talking about narrative work and da da da, people were like, what? And so mm -hmm. I have a, a little bit of a background in um, psychology and counseling. And I, you know, I'm a life coach and, uh, you know, I, I mentor and do all of those things and have been for some time. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the workings are, it's a hybrid. It's, you know, I've taken a little bit from education, a little bit from uh, from uh, psychology and counseling and coaching, and a little bit um, from technology, a lot from business, a lot from life skill building, from like social work kind of mm -hmm. kind of ideas, and um, interpersonal relationship building. All of these things kind of 
come together, but they, they are f held firmly together with social media. And so, you know, when I started, people didn't know how to use Facebook, any, you know, people older than like 30, I'm saying, I'm not, you know, obviously the young folks at that time, 10 years ago, they're in, those folks now are in their thirties, but at that time that, that Facebook was their thing, you know, and I was like, this is where everybody is. So yeah. if this is where everybody is, then let me use this as a tool because if I can get a daughter or a son of a, a, a veteran to get on my page, then they'll tell their mom. Mm -hmm. you know, it builds that way. And so, uh, so that's, so loosely, that's how all the pieces came together. I presented my project, which used um, writing, um, virtual reality um, training, uh, which is a whole nother talk show if we, we, we probably won't have time for, but uh, virtual reality uh, train education and learning system and uh, uh, music narrative, like taking your, your, your narrative and putting it into music using um, uh, mirroring behavior. So like things that I'm doing, you know, I'm telling people how to do it. I'm showing them by showing them a video. Hey, I'm out here at Suzy Q's, blah, blah, blah. And I'm talking about this thing you know, and look over here and this is what you do. And this is people you need to talk to and check in your area and see where those people are. And see, people don't think of it as an, as an educational piece. They see it as, oh, they're just on the video. And that's what, what the type, that's what we learned in, in the training was how to teach people things in a way that they don't feel like they're, they're in school and learning. Yeah. So exactly. that, Adult learning, we need, um, we need something practical that we can use like this instant. And so yep. this is the perfect platform because you can be like um, at the doctor's office, catching a few minutes of education yeah. or, and I know I don't, I don't read textbooks really anymore, books anymore, because my mind is always going. I do a lot of audio books and podcasts. Mm -hmm. So your platform is perfect because while I'm just trying to sit down and focus, I can listen to it and get the information I need while I'm doing something else. Yes. So you're really, this is awesome. And so the MST community part came in because what I, what happened was service the film, but before service the film, I was supposed to help them find people to participate. Mm -hmm. And after they, after Dr. Rock and uh, Patty Stoddard had talked to me, they really felt like I needed to be included in the documentary. And that was a whole nother thing that I, I, I recognized the power of being able to tell my narrative, it's hard, but though. as long as they would let me use the fact that I was building this platform online within that documentary, mm -hmm. then I felt okay with doing it. But I, I knew that part had to be included. Um, and they, there was never an issue with them, it, but you know, with some, um, times when you have a are asked to do a documentary or anything like that they have a very specific thing they want you to do they have a very specific way they want you to do it and I was allowed a lot of uh space in um in within that documentary to not only um be a participant like them asking me questions and interviewing me but me having opportunity to interview um Dr. Patty Hayes from the VA and then also being able to share the way that the platform of using social media was going to work to be able to bridge the community, which in turn helped, you know, uh, that project become a transmedia project. So it wasn't just a documentary. It became this traveling thing that we went around and we traveled and did um, presentations. And then uh, uh, um, a social media site was created to support the documentary. So people all over the country would see the documentary and then they'd come on the service um, page and be like, oh my gosh, I'm in New York or I'm in Washington or I'm in, you know, wherever, I'm in Minnesota. And I just saw the documentary, you know, and I didn't know that there were people having this experience. And so um, I'm still one of the administ administrators, um, even today, um, this is like I said, eight, seven, eight years later, I'm still one of the administrators. Um, but I had WVSJ then, and a lot of people don't know that because it wasn't about me creating a brand. Um, like, oh, I have to, I'm, you know, it was more about me creating a community. And I know um, across the spectrum of organizations, I'm the only organization that came out from that perspective. 
it wasn't a big deal for me to have a website. We didn't have a website until like maybe three years ago. <laughs> I didn't have business cards. I legitimately did not have business cards until maybe 2014 or 15. And people were like, how are people getting in contact? Wow. Like, well, I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Facebook. People send me a message and I respond to them. I don't know. <laughs> How do you get in touch with people, you know, <laughs> because, because I live this. This is not something that I just decided to do because it's going to make my brand look better. This is what I, and I am engulfed in um, from, from an organizational point of view, but also as an individual, I was engulfed in it because it was about creating the communities. And so I also do technically assist other organizations on how to get started or how to help their programming or you know, um, how to get more veteran women to participate. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's how I ended up with Protect Our Defenders, which was what you were asking about military sexual trauma and testifying before Senate. Uh, that all came out of my narrative, me sharing my narrative of my experiences on service and traveling around and the CEO and founder of Protect Our Defenders um, seeing some of that and, and asking to speak to me excuse me, and then saying, you know, hey, we really would like for you to sit on our board as an advisor, and also we'd like to know if you'd be willing to testify before Senate. You know, and I had, I had already, like, kind of been, to, I had been to D.C., and I had, we had screened service um, before senators and stuff like that, so that, I didn't feel weird about it. I was like, oh, okay, you know, it was kind of like, yeah, you know, and uh, <laughs> um, I had no idea because I had done all kinds of stuff at DC and it never had went beyond just, you know, DC. Mm -hmm. the, you, know, you know what I'm saying? The belt. Yeah. Cause the beltway, things happen all the time in the beltway and you just kind of like, yeah, you know. But when, like I had French reporters and, and, and Japanese reporters and people from all over the world contacting me, I was like, freak, that, 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 at that point I realized, I was like, whoa, this is, this imp the impact of this is way it's going to be way farther than I could have ever imagined and and I'm still getting people who are like I didn't know that was you in that documentary I'm just you know they're sitting at a table with me on Thursday talking <laughs> and, then they go, and then they're doing a presentation that that has the documentary in it and they're like I just sat and talked to that woman I was just <laughs> with her. and they send me a message like oh my god why didn't you say something I was like what was I gonna say I'm, I don't you know take my medals and like I'm Bridget McCoy from, Sir, you know, it's like, I'm just, I'm a veteran, just like you. We served, we wore the uniform. This is a sisterhood. This is about creating community. So, you know, it's not, you know, the, the hoopla is important when I have to stand in front of people to, like you say, speak to my credentialing and, and, yeah. and, and why I'm a subject matter expert and yeah. why what I am saying supersedes a lot of the other conversations that are out there. Yes. Not because I'm set, you know, on myself, but because I have the, the experiential knowledge as an individual, but then I also have talked with so many women vets. <laughs> it's, it's unbelievable when people say, I don't know how you know all these people. I'm like, I don't either, but I do. And, well, and so that, I mean, that, you know, that creates that, that flow so that I can do the work because then people know that I'm a safe place to come you know, the organization is a safe place to come first. And they know that their narratives, I'm not going to use their narratives. That's why you don't see a lot about WBSJ. You don't see us, yay, we're the, you know, come look at Susie and hear her horrible tragedy mm -hmm. and give us money. It's like, you know, yeah, we're doing stuff. Send us some money if you, can, if you can. And if Susie wants to tell people privately what we've done for her, then, but, you know, we're not going to, we, we respect the narratives of, of women vets. We, we really, that's like a big deal. And so I don't sit on boards unless they understand that with me. Like, I'm not going to sit on your board. I'm not going to work for your organization if you're not going to allow women vets to tell the fullness of their narrative of whatever they experienced. Um, don't say, well, we want you to say you're a woman vet and how great your, your story is, you know, that you got all this rank, but don't talk about the MST or don't talk about the, this other thing we yeah. don't talk about domestic violence in the military. That's going to bring a negative light. It's like, so now you're telling this person to how separate the story. Yeah. All the important stuff that made them who they are. Yeah. And you're so right. It's so important to respect 
their their safe place because it's such a hard story to tell. And so now you're going to open up and say, hey, you know, we want you to tell this story to the world. We're going to expose you to the world. Like we know it took you like eight years of therapy and a couple of pills to get here, but now we need you to open up to everybody else. Do you mind? Yeah. So, yeah, you respecting that space and that safe zone is important. And I'm gonna do my. I'm a little tiny, little grain of sand in this whole thing. So I'm gonna no, do my, you're not. my, you're my big, best big, as a like tiny little grain of sand to make this viral because other women veterans they need to hear this. They need yeah. to know that there's an organization out there that respects their story and their space and their journey to telling their story because it's so much work to get to say anything to anybody yeah. um, and that you guys are going to help. And sometimes <clears throat> the narrative isn't that there was MST. Sometimes the narrative was that there was racial discrimination mm. or sexual discrimination. Like they discriminated against you because you were a woman. And, 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 and some folks, it took them time. Like they meet me and they're like, oh, everything was perfect. I never had any experience. Oh, you know. And then 10 years, you know, seven years later, because it hasn't been quite 10 years yet. Seven years later, they're saying, you know, I'm really finally coming to recognizing that I did experience this or this or this or this. Yes, I had a great, you know, professional experience, but emotionally, yeah. I, I took a toll. And, and, and being a part of this community has helped me to really seek out and heal. And I'm like, yeah, that's, that's, that's it. That's what we want. That's all we want. So we have women who are multimillionaires who are doing great things, have businesses and travel the world. And we have women who have, uh, have been, have, have, and are homeless and are struggling in that process. But what, what I hope to do, cause I went through that. And so what I hope to do is kind of, you know, shore them up, and say, these are the challenges, I understand them, this is the path, let's shorten the time that it's gonna take you to get out of this situation. Mm -hmm. But while we're doing it, we're just not gonna rush you, we need to make sure that you're holistic well, not just, oh, you got a house now, go live in it, or oh, you got counseling and some pills, go take them. But that holistically, that you know, that you're always continuing to better yourself. Um, and that's probably the coaching part of <laughs> me that, you know, <laughs> kind of builds on that and that's and, and the counseling part because I think that 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 those two things go very well hand in hand so um well yeah. I don't want to shorten this too much um okay. however we have a few minutes and we might have to have a second interview <laughs> um do you have any advice for any of our women veterans for one who are business owners or who have aspirations of doing something following their dreams because mm -hmm. i know in the military they tell us what we're going to do when we get out yeah <laughs> yeah they tell you yeah and, and and people will tell you and that's the hard part because so there's this this i usually tell people that you know one, you have to listen to somebody who, who knows a little bit about whatever you're talking about doing, just even if it's not a lot. So have a, a board of advisors for yourself as an individual, someone who can speak to your financial part, someone who can speak to your academic part, someone who can speak to your emotional part, someone, you know, people in your life who are willing to um, pour into you uh, it, and it doesn't have to be anything monetary or anything like that, but they're just willing to like, hey, you know, CEO Johnson, can you, can I run things by you when I'm, you know, in these challenges or can I come to you for a, a, um, a referral? Can you help me get my foot in the door over here? Um, just to talk to somebody about this situation, just be a warm, hand, you know, so uh, I would say that that's like the first thing. The second thing is to, um, and this goes like again into my coaching part. The second thing I would say is that to, to, to brainstorm about, a, to start a blueprint, a life blueprint. The life blueprint it, is not going to, it's, it's like what people do architecturally. They build a house and they say, this is the plumbing and this is the you know, electrical and all that. And so you need all of those elements holistically. You know, what's my mental well being going to be if, mm -hmm. I, if I start a restaurant? And I have two small children. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. you have to look at the whole picture. Yes, it may be your dream, your life dream to tour with, you know, um, 
uh, Patty LaBelle or something, but mm -hmm. it, but you have to be you have to recognize that there's going to be a risk and there's going to be a part that you're going to have to give up to get mm -hmm. that. Yeah, you know, I think Taraji talked about that. You know, people telling her, you know, hey, I'm not, you know, you're going to pack up your baby and go somewhere you don't know and 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 you don't have any money. Yeah, you, know, you need to give up this dream. And I think we, as women. People say that to us way more than they should. I, it's rare that you hear them, people say that to men. Um, I think that, you know, women have the ability to do way more than what we're doing. I think mm -hmm. we scale way higher than what we have. Yeah. I think that we have to create these communities of support so that if I'm writing a contract for this big thing, I reach over and say, hey, aren't you doing xyz oh my gosh i'm i need someone to help me fulfill this contract yeah and 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 you know that we begin to do that so again the blueprint and then partnering and collaborating with other strong women in the community yeah so um those things you know somebody wants more than that they can hire me to coach them but yeah, but yeah. <laughs> that you know those are those are three anchoring places i would i would you know those are three pillars i would say you know to begin the process and 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 for some people it's quick it will happen boom boom boom, boom and they have to be ready to scale and run with it and for some people it will be a, a much slower process not because they aren't their idea isn't good and what they're doing isn't great it took me nine years to get to this point I mean, with the with other finances and other things, I probably could have scaled much faster. But it was important to build the community, so so I would have lost something in that yeah. scaling. So sometimes it's it's you, you know you have to offset like what's important, mm -hmm. you know, an important thing is making money important. Yes, pay yourself. That's number four. <laughs> Always pay yourself, even if it's a hundred dollars a month. Pay yourself, and every year give yourself a raise, even if it's ten dollars. Pay yourself. Um, because of the other thing we tend to do, and, and, and I have to give full disclaimer, this was a labor of love. I've put a lot of my own money into um, this organization, and I do not pay myself at this time. Mm -hmm. And there are some specific reasons that I don't, but I do tell women when they are sitting down to make a plan that it is important that they pay themselves, that they make sure that their expenses are taking care of their basic basic expenses you know like putting gas in the car to go to you know yeah mountain meeting, those kinds of things that you have that set aside so um though i i keep saying i'm not gonna say anything else and i keep adding things but those are <laughs> those are some of the main those are the core things and I, and and, I, and people have heard me say those things on on platform on one at one place or another so um so it's not uh it's not trademarked information. It's <laughs>
100% by the volunteer staff and the funds that we raised um, went directly to uh, running and, and putting on the programming. So they got to see that whole, you know, from beginning to end, from committee, like we're gonna do it to we did it, everything in between. <laughs> so, um, and that was OJT for a lot, of, a lot of the women that said never had anything like that. So everything like putting the program together, uh, getting the uh, talents, um, and this is the funny thing about the projects that we do. All of our projects, uh, our talent are women vets. So when you come to a conference, 95, so sometimes 100% of the folks that are presenting are veteran women. Maybe two or three people out of, the, out of, out of 60 or 70 people presenting are not veteran. So uh, that is a very different paradigm. because. It is. Of, <laughs> a lot of organizations hire people to come and everybody's like, Ooh, we're going to see Susie talk. And it's like, well, what if we, well, let's, let's see somebody that's a vet talk to vets and tell us what their experiences were and put our vets at, on the platform and have them have the opportunity to, uh, to scale and their, their, um, their business industry and say that they've done a nationally um, recognized or, um, event conference. We live streamed it. We recorded it and all of it is on demand. So I can give you those links as well so that you can share yeah. all of that. So we've got a lot of things going on <clears throat> behind the scenes. Um, you know, WVSJ may not be flashy uh, with everything, but we, we've helped. Yeah, we've, we've helped uh, with research. We've been involved in um, helping to, uh, to put together the appropriate types of research questions so that we get the appropriate types of uh, information so that we can help uh, policy, help change policy. Yeah. So just sitting in front of somebody and saying, well, I think we should do this or that or the other for policy change is great if you think, you know, if you think you know everything, but it's a very different po process to sit down with other people and, and, and craft through crowdsourced, um, again, these are, deep, you know, 10 years ago, these were not concepts, but crowdsourced um, information processes of get, gathering data and putting it together to create the types of uh, resources and information and research and policy that, uh, you know, in the past, women vets' voices hadn't even been at the table. And so since they wouldn't let us at the table, we pulled up our own table on virtually. So, yeah. Well, <laughs> okay. So I'm going to take all this and I'm going to share it with the world. I have to wrap it up. Unfortunately, but we're gonna need to do a number two because I have more questions. Like, oh, okay, great. Yeah. Um, so listen, angels, this is awesome information. I want you guys to take notes. I want you to ask questions. Ask questions below. This is gonna be on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. Ask questions. Um, Bridget is a wealth of information, and she is just bubbling to share. Um, yeah. All of her links are gonna be posted below, so please click on them. Um, find out about these inform this information. Even if you're not a vet, share it. Let's make this viral. We have so much crazy that is viral. We want to make this viral. We want to make women, veterans, issues, and taking care of us viral. Yeah.